everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Okay, so this uh, really is the review of Autogyro's MTO Sport 2017. This aircraft, as you can see, is uh, pretty brand new actually. I think it's only done uh, about 20 uh, flying hours. And this is the latest uh, aircraft in the two-seat tandem open arrangement from Autogyro. For some crazy reason, and best known to them, They've instantly dated it by calling it the 2017 model. Happily for us, it's pretty easy therefore to suggest that it was launched in 2017, so it's coming up to three years old. And as you can see, especially uh, I've left the MTO3 behind and you can, A, it gives you a good idea of scale and also gives you an even better idea of some of the, the changes. The biggest change overall is the fact that they've gone for a very corporate, or they've reinforced the corporate image with the nose. Um, this sort of three LED lights at the front, a lot, flat, a lot flatter nose uh, than the original MTO3, which is where it all started. Um, I think it looks very nice. I think uh, it works very well. You can see we've got uh, luggage compartment is in the nose. I'll open that later and I'll just show you uh, what that's all about. The cockpit uh, is much bigger actually than the original and it's a much nicer and uh, a better place for it. Um, you've still got a similar feel. I mean certainly if you were coming from the original MTO3 or indeed the previous 2010 uh, iteration of the Sport, everything would be familiar. Um, but there's a, just a, a better build quality, a better feel about the whole thing. So uh, just to explain what we've got here, uh, fuel gauge, which is certainly better than the, uh, than the original, uh, engine RPM, rotor RPM. We've now got some alarms across the, uh, across the top there, uh, generator, alternator, uh, low voltage, clutch, which I'll come on to explain, water temperature, oil pressure, and low fuel. Low fuel comes on. Uh, with around seven and a half liters fuel remaining. Clutch light, that's two, uh, it's actually got dual purpose. One is if you're too aggressive with the pre-rotator, uh, then that comes on and illuminates uh, solid and says, well, basically it's su suggesting that you might want to be a little bit less aggressive with the throttle uh, when you're pre-rotating. It also flashes if you release the pre-rotator and it doesn't feel that you've pre-rotated to sufficient rotor RPM, it will warn you to say, hey, you may get some blade sailing if you persist uh, with all of this. On the right-hand side, you've got oil pressure, oil temperature, and uh, water temperature. You've also got a pressure gauge for either rotor brake or the trim system. The usual uh, vertical speed indicator, which is becoming commonplace in uh, UK aircraft, uh, I'm not really overly uh, overly fussed with uh, vertical speed. I think you can just look at the altimeter and look out of the window, uh, and you can just see I've just put on the um, master switch to give you these new gauges, which are airspeed indicator and altimeter. Uh, they're digital now rather than good old steam gauges. Personally I think steam gauges work completely fine but I think they've just gone for a, a flashier sort of more modern look and um, yeah it, it's not to the detriment of the aircraft. We've also got an avionics switch so we use a P2 which is familiar landing light strobe navigation um, but now we've got an avionics switch which catches a lot of people out initially because they forget to turn the avionics on initially with the uh, master and then of course neither altimeter nor airspeed indicator will work. The other nice touch here, you can see this knob which is like a uh, calidus and if I pull it you can see how it moves the uh, rudder pedals closer so you can be, it, the, the cockpit basically accommodates um, varying sizes of, of pilot without the need to uh, get the spanners out and make manual adjustments to the controls, which is nice. Over on the uh, 
control sort of panel here where the throttle quadrant sits. Throttle, brake, choke is all familiar from the old aircraft, although it's just packaged slightly in a, in a nicer uh, surround. You've also got here, this is blanks just because it's not such a high spec aircraft, but you've got the option for heated seats, uh, seat lumber, and also adjustment for seat height and, uh, and reach again, just making the aircraft accommodate a greater range of, of, of pilot size without the need to get manually uh, involved with spanners for adjustment. Now the one other nice thing, and uh, definitely for instructors, which of course these aircraft are certainly uh, popular with, and that's in the rear uh, seating area, you've got a much nicer and uh, more, com a more comprehensive uh, instrument package. So we've got an altimeter, airspeed indicator, rotor and engine RPMs. We've also got a couple of mags and uh, and the ability on the stick. This is trim and uh, pre-rotator and a push to talk uh, radio at the front of the, uh, on the trigger basically. That basically means that if you are an instructor now, you can do absolutely everything you could from the front seat which makes those early lessons with students a lot less fraught with, uh, with, with fear and anxiety that they're not going to be able to get the engine started or, or indeed stopped uh, in an emergency. Uh, again, you've got the same kind of uh, throttle brake combination, heated seat option, lumbar option and seat adjustment. So that's, uh, that's quite a nice addition. You can also see we've got a lot more aerodynamic fairing uh, on the mast, which is, I guess, a little bit cosmetic because ultimately, um, although this is 120 indicated uh, VNE, which is 20 miles an hour in excess of uh, the old MT-03, that's obviously consistent with where we were with 2010 uh, version of the sport. So in truth, uh, the aerodynamics don't really give you a, gr a, a great deal in terms of performance. We're still topped out at 120. Now, unlike the MT-03, which if you remember, I suggested was more comfortable around 70, 80. These will genuinely be happy at 100, 110. Now this aircraft, ah, the other thing, which I haven't mentioned, is uh, roll trim. Uh, in a tandem aircraft, it's largely, it's largely irrelevant to be honest but it is if you do use these things for longer trips it does allow you to get the thing set up exactly as you want now sorry I was going to go on to say this is a 912 powered aircraft uh, with a fixed pitch uh, prop and that will really mean that if you're doing if you want to get to 120 you need to really compromise a little bit on takeoff performance because uh, left with the prop set out of the factory you'll only get to the 120 miles an hour VNE and if you're in a, a shallow dive to be honest it sits up near max continuous with a 912 and you'll notice by the way that Rotax now have gone away from the colour coding that they used to uh, on, the, uh, on the cam covers so the, the, now the colours are more colour coordinated with the aircraft uh, but yeah with a 912 VNE really at a, at, a, at a normal fixed pitch prop setting is only available uh, in a shallow dive. The other nice thing or interesting thing should I say is you'll see here the fuel capacity now is 94 litres. Now 94 litres is about 68 kilos and 68 kilos with an aircraft base weight of 285 max all up weight of 500 does mean that you need to be very aware of not going over max all up uh, max all up weight certainly uh, I mean I'm an instructor I'm about 80 kilos and uh, you know 80 kilos with full fuel and a 285 kilo base weight means that my passenger is going to be really less than less than I weigh. And, and in truth, in 2019, uh, you know, most you know well-fed 
shall we say, adults are kind of pushing up towards 80, 90. You know, certainly if you're over six foot, you'll be at 100 kilos most probably. Uh, you do need to be aware of that because, okay, look, obviously flying over max uh, all at weight is not funny from a safety point of view, uh, but also, you know, be aware that you're just going to put a lot more stress on things like undercarriage, uh, rotor, and of course the engine, and then of course add in summer hot weather, or especially if you're in the US, you're going to get some, uh, you know, you can certainly get some decent uh, altitudes. You know, you may not even take off at all, and uh, you know that's something to be aware of. Baggage space in the rear, you can buy uh, an optional baggage. Uh, like a bag that slots down the side they're like panniers they're, they're well fitted it's quite nicely fitted luggage actually that's useful and as you can see the load there can be uh, five kilos aside you can put three kilos in our usual auto gyro uh, document pouch and I was going to show you wasn't I the uh, the front luggage space which is just in here let's get the right key yes the right key there you go you can see you've got, I don't know, you get, for a man you'll get an overnight bag, for a woman you've got no chance. But interestingly, and this is another interesting point to take note of, baggage load, you can see it says, it's 10 kilos maximum, but the maximum pilot weight is reduced by twice the luggage weight. So, just what does that mean? Well, let's go and look and I'll show you. So if you fill that to the gunnels of 10 kilos, now to be fair, the size of that box isn't exactly huge, so it's gonna have to be some fairly dense uh, baggage. But if you did put 10 kilos in there, then the front seat can be reduced by twice the luggage load. So that means that the front seat maximum weight is reduced by 20. And bearing in mind that the front seat max weight is only 110 kilos anyway, so that means you're down to 90 kilos pilot weight in the front, which isn't huge. Um, certainly, you know, again, as I said, in 2019, there's a lot of guys, especially if you're, you know, six foot, are gonna be more than uh, 90 kilos. The only way around max all up weight, of course, don't forget this is a 500 kilo uh, max takeoff weight with, uh, the 912 you get a 914 it goes to 560 and certainly uh, that's the case also with the 915 now in the uh, mt03 preview i mentioned the tailplane the tailplane as you can see has changed they're now consistent with cavalon and calidus tailplanes however the rudder surface area is smaller and uh, you don't run out of control authority it's not a, it's not an issue but you do notice, uh, especially in vertical descents, that if you get slow, uh, you'll need a lot more pedal input than you're used to with the uh, older iteration. The other nice thing here is uh, we've got a little, uh, we've got a little wheel. It's like a skateboard wheel, just to stop uh, tail strikes being uh, very aggressive uh, on the airframe, because. One feature of uh, auto gyro aircraft, as you can see, is this crank keel, and it does allow people to over rotate. Thankfully, now with the addition of that wheel, uh, over rotation isn't such a drama because it doesn't gouge into the airframe. You can also see we've got the high intensity strobes now on the tailplane, which I think is a good addition because, or a, or a, or a positive change, should I say, uh, because it makes the aircraft a lot more conspicuous. And, under, and the radiator is a fair bit bigger than the old uh, MT-03 version. One other thing is that on the fuel, we've now got a little uh, sight tube, similar to most uh, common kit-built planes, aerobatic planes. Uh, that's a common, common sight on those, but this is now, unlike in the MT-03, where literally you just got, let me just show you while I'm here, you'd literally just got graduations on the tank and you could see through the tank and say, okay, I've got X amount of liters or gallons if you're in the US now, it's with a sight tube. A little hatch here to check oil. Of course, the motor is kind of more 
covered uh, in these later additions with aerodynamic uh, bodywork than on the on the earlier aircraft does make the check a little bit more comp or a little bit more um, you know hard to get to some of the you know you can see that the top engine mounting is gonna is hidden under the bodywork but you, but it's still fairly accessible and the other thing is access is via the removal of this pin and we lift up the bar and obviously now you've got uh, full access for the passenger and the pilot uh, compartment. The other thing I would say, if I was to own one of these, you've got to be a little bit careful of, of just how much leverage you put on this. The temptation is for the rear seat passenger to use this as uh, something to lean against to get, to get a good, uh, you know, to steady themselves as they get in the rear. You do need to make sure that they only pull on the route because if they pull up here, they're going to get serious leverage and it's not going to be long before that bar is, uh, is wrenched off. The final thing actually, which I haven't mentioned, you can see now here, if you look at the uh, rudder, by the way, how much adjustment. Also, you've got adjustment in the rear, uh, just exactly the same as you pull. You can just see how, how much adjustment you've got uh, with, the, with the rear pedals. It gives a, a really useful range of, uh, of body sizes in this aircraft. The other thing I was going to say is, let me just put this down again, also it's important to remember, uh, do put this grab bar down before attempting to start the engine or, or taking off because of course you'll end up with that uh, potentially causing damage or injury. Yeah, with the 2017 uh, Sport, the other feature is that you can pre-rotate now to 320 uh, rotor RPM. And just a caution on that, certainly with a 912, if you do pre-rotate to 320, then for sure it is not possible to really uh, improve your takeoff distance. And the problem is, is that when you pull the stick back with the usual technique, uh, you just create a whole, more, uh, a whole lot more drag. What you need to do is modify the takeoff technique such that once you've pre-rotated to 320, and I'll show you on the gauge uh, up here, look, there you go, look, you can see the new graduation at 320. If you do pre-rotate to 320, when you pull the stick back, you, you don't really need to pull the stick back uh, all that much actually. And that's because the, the rotor is almost at flying speed and uh, and so you don't need to really have any uh, infill from the ground roll to build rotor rpm anymore so there you go 2017 mto sport beautiful aircraft looks very well functions very well the build quality is great retail now because uh, sterling's a little bit under pressure because of all of our political uh, craziness right now Sterling is uh, making these aircraft around mid 70s, uh, early 80,000 sterling, and uh, that's even with a very basic, uh, very basic spec for avionics wise. Just a word, final word on the avionics. You can see that, as I said, this is a relatively straight, uh, simple aircraft, but this panel, um, you can mount either iPads, uh, Garmin, uh, and, and the usual plethora of uh, specialist uh, aeronautical GPS and, um, and flight instrumentation in there. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video and um, it's given you a bit of an insight into the 2017 MTO Sport from Autogyro.